Slaves to Armok, God of Blood. Chapter 2, Dwarf Fortress. Histories of Jealousy and Enterprise. Starting a new game here. I'm going to be playing Dwarf Fortress. I uh, should be putting up, I think, three of these at about the same time. There's going to be one that's how to install. Uh, there's going to be this one, which is starting a new world, and then there's going to be a third one where we actually play, because it takes a minute to start a new world. We'll get into why that is in here in just a second, but to start with, what on earth is Dwarf Fortress? Dwarf Fortress is a building game, and it is a management simulator. So the, the goal behind Dwarf Fortress is you have some dwarves, and you build a fortress. But it's a lot more complicated than that, because they put in all kinds of bizarre, advanced, you know, real-world stuff. And instead of just building a fortress, you command that a fortress be built, and then the dwarves decide how to go about doing that. When you do things like, say, I want a diorite wall hill here. The dwarves will decide, one of them will go, I can do that, I can build a wall, and we'll pick up diorite from somewhere and go put it down. So it's it's not quite as direct as, say, The Sims, where you tell The Sim, this individual, go to work, now make dinner, now go out dancing, and so on. It's not quite as removed as, like, Sim City, where you say, I want a residential district, and some people will build houses and stuff and whatnot. You have individuals that you're individually concerned about, but you're more guiding their overall progress while you, while you manage this fortress that you're going to build. So all that being said, a lot of verbiage and... It's all kind of abstract from here. Let's dive right in and create a new world. So we're going to have it load up all of the uh, stuff. Here is your warning. This game is currently in alpha. And by currently, I mean it's been in alpha since 2004. It's probably going to be in alpha forever, which is fine. It's playable, and that's all that really counts. Welcome to the alpha of Dwarf Fortress. As there has been some time between releases, Instability is to be expected. Report crashes, hangs, lags, bugs, and general disappointment at the forums. They are at our website, bay12games.com. Check there for updates. You can also find an older, yet more stable version of the game there. As of May 2016, you can get, the hel you can get help at the fan-created dwarffortresswiki.org. Please make use of and contribute to this valuable resource. If you enjoy the game, please consider supporting Bay 12 Games. There's more information at our website and in the readme file. Escape to continue. So I will have links at the bottom to the wiki and to the download. There are some other tools and some associated miscellanea. Those there will be links to in the installation video. So let's just hit escape to continue. This game is predominantly controlled with the keyboard. You won't really need a mouse once you start it up. So here are our world settings. World size. The smaller it is, the less that's going on, the less variation you have, the less possibility for neighbors. The bigger you have, the longer it takes for everything to generate, and the more processing power it takes up while it's running, because it is simulating on some level the entire world all of the time. Medium is the default. I'm going to leave it there. That's fine. History is how long it takes to plan the world. And the other thing is, if it's very short, mega beasts are more likely to be wandering the world. If it's too long, then civilizations die out and you end up with very few neighbors. So we'll start with a medium of 250 years, which is the default. Number of civilizations, too few and there's not enough going on, too many, it's too crowded. You can, as you play the game, mess with these and see what you like and don't like about different ones. How many distinct places can exist? I haven't messed with that. Number of beasts, this is the mega beasts. 
which we can have all the time. We can have never. Just leave it in the middle. Natural savagery, which is where the wild stuff is more than the civilized stuff. Makes the world more difficult to settle. Mineral currents is usually the only thing I, I boost. I make it frequent because I'm cheap and I'm not very good at the game. So just kind of my handicap. Frequent mineral currents. Here we go. It is simulating world building. It's putting together mountains and seas. It's right now making lakes and minerals. There are rivers everywhere. Here it plants civilizations. And it does all this according to rules that are based on real world geophysics and real world hydrology and real world social science. And so it plots out, you know, the rivers go here. Well, here's a river, so there's probably civilization near it. The mountains are here, dwarves like mountains, so there's probably a dwarven mountain. These two civilizations are nearby, and according to our random number generator, they're friends, so they built a road between themselves, and so on. And it goes on like that. I don't actually know what all of these symbols mean. I have no idea. But in general, green stuff is things that grow. Uh, that gold might be some kind of civilization. Deserts? I've seen deserts. They look different. That's a glacier, I'm pretty sure. It's like a frozen lake. Uh, this is a river. I think it's an ordinary river. This is all ocean. You know, here's an island there. Here's another landmass. This is a city. Got a road leading out. That's probably some kind of city. Some other kind of city. Right? Little ports, maybe. This, I bet, is a some kind of civilization head or something. I don't know what is that's zero. See, these eyes, they keep popping up. Those might be some kind of town or settlement. I think the purple is like cursed realms or, you know, natural savage lands, sort of less optimal settling points. As it goes through history, it's developing, you know, more and more prominent civilizations and who's in charge of what. If we look over on the left, um, you see that this is when it's done all these things. It's actually already done them. It looks like it created a world that didn't really do what we wanted in terms of history length, civilization number, so on and so forth, so it rejected it and started over. Elevation, all these things. So we are in the age of myth. There's rules about what these are depending on how many civilizations are active, how many mega beasts there are, and so on. It is currently year 113 out of 250. So far, 19,255 historical figures have been defined. 5,000 of them are dead. 116,000 events have been recorded. And it just kind of keeps going. There is a legends mode that will go over, you know, what all these do and what's going on in each of them, so on and so forth. Um, it's going to be a little bit more, maybe four or five more minutes. So I'm going to pause the recording and I will come right back in when it has picked up again. Okay, and we're back. Now let me fix this a little bit. Er, if I move it out of the way of my mouth. Okay, if I move the mic out of the way of my mouth, then my breathing doesn't pick it up as much. So, we are back, and we have the Continent of Hope, the Pregnant Hill, and uh, we got some some place to to look around at here's the so we have generated a region called Kolobramul, the infinite plain looks like we have 250 years generated there's a little yellow x you'll see i'm gonna move my mouse here a little yellow x that is our cursor currently looking at the pregnant hill on the continent of hope so what we can do is actually move this around and there's the jungle of fortunes in here which is kind of exciting the Desert of Knives. What are all these eyes? I keep wondering. I never look it up. The Elven Forest Retreat of the Tinit... The Tinitica. The Tinitica. Okay. Oh, so those are Elven Forests, so they expand like that. It's kind of cool. Some desert, some jungle... 
yeah. This, I think, is... Yeah, there's some dwarven hillocks, some human hillocks. So these are settlements in the hills. Here's a road between these uh, little f fortresses and cities and stuff. What do we got in here? Here's some uh, the brutal hills. Dunes of mesh. I think this is a frozen lake, right? Seas of gloss. Oh. Huh. This is the actual ocean out here. But here's some roads. That's a tomb. What do we got in here? Dark human fortress. Oh, yeah, it's probably gonna be some evil stuff there. Maybe a necromancer with uh, zombies and stuff. So this is the region that it liked for us. Was this southerly region down here. What? What's this little red guy here? The moist forests. Huh. Seems pretty nice. Alright, so now that the world has been created, let's uh, enter to accept. And then it's going to kind of unload all that memory stuff and dump it back into the save file and, and so on. So, this shouldn't take too long. Is there anything else I need to discuss while this is happening? Um, you may have noticed that the basic interface is a little bit harsh. It's uh, kind of vicious. So, there are tile sets you can get that will ease the viewability of what's going on. But I am lazy, so I don't get involved with those. And I've done pretty well so far just, you know, working with the default. You do actually get used to it after a little while. It's kind of visual overstimulation. It's a whole bunch of nonsense in your face. But it, it does become clear what's going on as you get used to it. It helps the more you dig underground because things are a little more uniform down there, so you don't have all the plants kind of getting in the way of what's going on. You can't really see them. So now we are back to the main menu. But we have this additional option, start playing. Create a new world and stuff. So we can actually start playing. There are three versions of the game. There are three games in this game. There's Dwarf Fortress, which is the main bulk of the game. You have your dwarves, you build your fortress. There is Adventurer Mode, where you play an adventurer in this world. You can actually visit your fortresses if you plan it out well enough and get an idea of how the world is situated. There is Legends Mode, where you just go through all of the things that have happened and look at all of the histories that are written into the game. We might look at some of these later in the game. But for right now, we're going to do the main thing and play Dwarf Fortress. And here it's preparing to create the world. Those are all creature symbols, loading all this stuff. And we start on the 15th of Granite. Here's a calendar. It's kind of simulating the year as it goes by in the year 250. This is the Dwarven calendar. It has 12 months, four seasons of 28 days apiece. Four, se er, four seasons, each consisting of three months of four weeks of seven days apiece. So, seven day week, four week month, three month season, four seasons per year. Okay, the Embark screen, where we are going to choose where we put our fortress. On the far right is the whole world, or at least some subsection of it, but mostly it's the whole world. In the middle is the region that we're in. And on the left, far left, is the local area where we're going to be placing our so the world, the region, and the local area where we're going to be placing our actual dwarves and where we're pretty much going to play the entire game names of stuff, here's some of your controls. Um, and this is information about the area. So I'm going to use the U, K, M, and H keys in sort of arrow key form. And we'll move around... What? I said we'll move... Yeah, there we go. We'll move around the local area, 
kind of pick some that's the J key there we go kind of pick a site that really works so here's some key things to pay attention to temperature is important if it gets too cold things freeze if it stays too hot stuff boils people get hurt trees are a really important resource so we don't want to be in a place where there isn't much tree yeah there's very little soil there's lots of metals however there's no river through here there's no aquifers water will be hard to come by and that's that's kind of a serious problem water is useful for a lot of things especially if you don't you know do a good job of brewing so this is kind of a meh zone by being by the mountain is good I want to be by the mountains because you know and they're stone that's the way that good dwarves behave let's uh let's try a different different region so it looks like we are between some elves here and between some dwarves over here it looks a little tight you know a little bit uh, crowded in there what if we come back over here now we've got a river we can be in clay and soil and an aquifer is actually dangerous it's not the best thing this is not in a mountain interesting if we move down what's this oh we can't really can't really embark there i, I don't think yeah because there's stuff going on so I'd like to be by a mountain, if possible. This is all claimed lands, claimed lands. If we go up above, mm, mm, mm. I I like this area, despite the aquifer. Um, there are ways to get through aquifers. I've, I've kind of looked into it. Well, let's look at some other stuff. Here's our neighbors. We have dwarves, elves, and humans around, which is good. More trading caravans, more stuff going on. That's pretty exciting. Doesn't look like we're at war with any of them, so that's really good. Our civilization is... Oh, we have a couple of options, I think. All right, we can, we can pick a different one. Oh, yeah. See, so the Sepia Citadel is in this vicinity here. So we are within civilization. There's other ones, though. We could be the Syrups of Owning. They're way down here. It seems kind of awkward, right? We might end up with problems with the neighbors. Can I go back? No, I can't. Okay. And the boots of fording are down here, so let's let's see what happens if we do this. What, what happens if we look at that? So relative elevation. This is our embark area. Here's where it gets taller. Here's where it gets lower. It's mostly lowlands. Mountains nearby, but not actually where we are. Cliff indicator. It's pretty flat with a little bit of height variation, but not like any serious, like up here it's cliffs, but there's not much going on there. So, back in here, towards our neighbors. Huh, still don't seem to have any, any major issues with anybody. This might be an interesting site. Yeah. Um, what if we are from the Syrups of Owning? Still no major issues. Although we're, we are kind of in the territory of a known dwarf group. Which, I just feel like that's kind of weird, right? That's a weird thing to do. Let's scoot over here. See what we got. So these are deserts. I don't really want to be in deserts if I can avoid it. Moderate vegetation, thick vegetation, wilderness, temperate conifer forest. I kind of like the sound of that. So let's move around over here. Now we're a little bit away from those those other dwarves. See, I think that's got some yeah, shrubland. Oh, conifer forest and shrubland. There's still no mountains in here. Aquifer, shallow metal, deep metals. I really want both of those plural, but, you know, if not, we can just hope that the shallow metal is one we can use. Oh, that's notes. I don't want to make a note. How do I delete this note? D. I don't want that note. That's what ruined it last time. Ah. I accidentally hit N. 
no, M. So let's be here. We want the river. River's good. You can get fresh water from a river. Uh, we like the variation I like because then you can get access to different kinds of seeds and things. Let's see what we got for neighbors. Still dwarves, elves, humans. Um, syrups of owning seems more likely than the boots of fording. So we'll, we'll expand from there instead of... I don't really want to be from these guys. They're too close. That just seems cheaty. You know. I like this. I like this a lot. Very deep soil, shallow clay. That'll be good for... Clay is nice to have. It'll be good for farming. Aquifer is a problem, but we can deal with that. That's not a problem that we are going to have any issues handling. I think this is going to be a really good embark site. So let us hit E, lowercase e, to embark. This area has an aquifer. It might be difficult to obtain stone because sometimes the aquifer is in the way of you and stone, and that's problematic. We'll see if we can't get through, all right? So go ahead and embark, enter. Do it anyway. Um, because this is, this is gonna be a long video. Sorry about the length. We're gonna prepare for the journey, and then I'm gonna call it on this episode, and we'll do a fresh episode when we're actually playing. So the final part, and I'll probably pause do a bit of picking, go with it. But the final part is we're going to assign some skills. All right, so I'm using the arrow keys here. Arrow keys to the left. I'm selecting which of my Urdim Stint Adab Sam and Dishma Ostar Morul and Thob Alethiseth and Suntir Ar Akrultat and all of these dwarves. So we have we are able to put 10 skill increases on any given dwarf before we can't put any more on that dwarf. Each skill increase costs a certain amount, which if I hit plus, it will add. Plus. If I hit minus, it will decrease. It costs 5. Okay. It costs 6 since I've put 1 in. It now costs 6 to get the next one out of these points right here. And we have 400 to start with. In addition to all of these, hit tab, we also have a bunch of other stuff that we should get. You know, food and drink and seeds and tools and raw materials and stuff like that. Animals, if we want to bring any animals with us, those will cost extra. It'd probably be good to have something, like a goat maybe. Uh, I kind of want to do sheep. Sheep are a bit expensive, but I think if I just get a pair of sheep... You can shear them, you can milk them. If they start breeding out of control, you can eat them. I think that'll be good. We could name our fort if we want to. The We'll pick a couple of... So you pick a couple of compounds and adjectives and get everything together, the blank of ang. Right now, it is katanma, katanamas or Channel Depths, which I like. It's a great name, Channel Depths. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this stuff. I'll be right back before we embark, and then sign off, and we will start a video. So give me just a moment. Okay. And we're back, and I have finished picking everything that I'm going to pick. So the things that I have added, all of this was pretty much already here. Down here, I added some Dwarven Wine, because more booze is better. Some Dwarven Run, for the same reason. Silk Cloth, because you have to dig pretty deep to get silk, so it's good to have some at Embark in case somebody really wants some, or you have a strong need of it for something. Got about ten of those, just to have enough. And then I got a bunch of random meats. Coyote liver, and dingo meat, and porcupine, and capybara, and some pond turtles. Now if you get two of these, They'll go into a barrel. Four of them will go into a barrel until you get, I think, ten? Maybe it's five? I don't, I'm not totally sure how many fill up a barrel. I don't remember. But I know that you don't put coyote liver and dingo meat in the same barrels, so that's two barrels. And it embarks with those barrels, and I didn't actually pay for them. Which is why you get this wild variety. I also added one to each of the dwarven ale and the dwarven beer, because those do the same thing. 
and you can hold 20 units in a barrel. So 41 is three barrels, and that's two barrels. And those barrels were, again, free. Barrels are nice because you can store stuff in them. So we'll go ahead, like, drink a beer, and then now we have a free barrel. I also bought some animals. Uh, I'm going to get a guinea hen and a guinea cock, and they're going to make little guinea eggs, and we'll eat those eggs, and maybe they're babies. I got a ewe and a ram. I'm going to have some sheeps. And I got some dogs and some rabbits. So hopefully we can get a little farm going. I spent a couple of points. This one I didn't put any points into. We'll figure out what to do with them later. Her, right? She. Him. Okay, yeah. By the way, you can see all of this about every dwarf who comes in. Every single dwarf will have this level of detail. They know how old they are. This is their most recent thought. Any extra thoughts they've had will happen. Here's some description of them. These are some of their attributes. This is some things that they like. What do we got here? Some other needs, some things that he wants. This stuff, some more things, and then all of them end with a short, sturdy creature fond of drink and industry, like all dwarves. This includes stuff like uh, what kind of minerals that they prefer, what sort of animals they like, horses for their strength, and bloated tubers for their stout shape, some things they like the sound of, some visions they like, what they like to eat and drink, does not like toads. Some of their, like, he's got surrounding space, but meager kinesthetics, so... I don't, I don't know. So, you get that for all of them. Going through some of these, um, one of them... Right? One of these likes... Guinea hens for something? Guinea fowl for their social nature, so I got a couple guinea hens and decided... Just, just make this one be the, uh... the farmer, right? So they have trainer and caretaker. I put some skills into some of them, but for the most part, I'm just leaving it blank, and we will train skills as we go. We'll get into how to do that when we actually play the game, but I think that's pretty much everybody. We're good to go. We've got all the items. We have spent all of our points. We could name the group if we want. Huh. Sukonator, the squashed boulder. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So let's... Mm, nah, we don't really need to save it. Well, yeah, I don't really need to save it. I think if I have a better idea of what I'm doing when I play later, I guess I've only played a bit, we'll, uh, we'll make a nicer one. So this has been like 25 minutes now, almost, I think. I'm going to call it on here. We will... E to embark. I said. Oh, I froze the game. So, we'll get this embark started, and I will start up the next video, probably from this screen, and we will play a game.